Hi everyone, welcome to Wool and Spinning. My name is Rachel and I can be found pretty much everywhere as well for pearls. This is Wednesday, uh, May 24th, 2017 and it is episode 71. Thank you so much for joining me. As you can tell, two weeks in a row the show has been released a day early. This is going to continue um, for the next few weeks. It's just because of my work schedule. Um, it actually works a little bit better because um, there's just a lot going on as we get closer and closer to weekends and I need Thursdays free. So I um, it's not a bad thing. You guys get the show a day early and I get to uh, start planning for next the next week's show one day early. So that's good. Uh, I want to welcome any new uh, and returning viewers to the show. Thank you so much for sticking with me and for continuing to watch. And I want to thank the Patreon subscribers of the show, especially you guys are the ones that keep the show on the air week after week. And this wouldn't exist if it wasn't for you. So thank you so much. If you're interested in learning more about Patreon, please head over to patreon.com slash pearls And please consider um, subscribing, even if it's just a dollar a month. It helps keep the lights on here. And I really appreciate your uh, contributions. So thank you you so much. Um, the Wool and Spinning Radio, which is a Patreon-only podcast, it's audio, has been released this month. I interviewed my dear friend Becca, who is part of the Patreon community over on our Slack channel, and uh, it was a pleasure to chat with her, and I hope that you enjoy that interview. I have just a little bit more housekeeping, and then we're going to get on with this show. Uh, we have started a new channel on the Slack channel called Hashtag Health. If you've missed it and, or you haven't been on Slack for a bit and you are a part of it, it is the $5 tier on Patreon. The reason why we started it was because there are so many of us that had some health goals that we were working on and working towards and we were looking for a little bit of added support. So if that is something that interests you, if you haven't been on Slack for a little while, please come over and check it out because there's been a lot of chatter, a lot of awesome goals set and lots of real positive reinforcement and encouragement from fellow community members. So I hope that you um, think about heading over there and checking that out. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention is, um, I can't remember what it was. There was something else. Nope, it's gone. If I think of it throughout the show, I will uh, say something. So in today's show, I don't really have anything that I've been working on. I really felt this week like I needed a bit of a spinning break. Um, we are on an off week for... Um, uh, my teaching schedule at Sweet Georgia. Um, halfway through the course we took a break so that everybody could keep on working and um, keep on working on the foundation and then next week we'll come back and start working on some more advanced techniques and um, I think I kind of needed a break too so I decided to put my stuff aside for the week. I have worked on a little bit of a couple of things just a little bit which I will share but I've actually been working on something that has nothing to do with spinning that's just straight knitting with commercial yarn and I'm actually going to show that this show so I hope that you don't mind the little deviation this week and uh, without further ado let's get on with the show. So the first thing that I thought I would chat about was um, a support spindling project that I have on my Russian spindle. The spindle is quite heavy, it's about 45 grams and I have been working on just the last tail end of the fiber from Fiber Club back in August, no July of 2016 when we were still doing Fiber Club in the Ravelry group. Um, I have been I had talked on a previous show, and I don't know which one it was, and I don't know how long ago it was, but it was a while ago, about um, that I had seen something on a YouTube channel about switching the hands that you draft with and um, spinning support spindling and drafting out the fiber with the other hand than how you spin on a wheel, uh, or like how you would traditionally draft, and that you would generally end up with... Um, it would feel over time more natural and you'd get good results. Um, I don't disagree with that. Lots of people in the group have had really good results with that. Um, but I have been chatting a lot with my friend uh, Kim, who is a local uh, master spinner. 
And her and I have been talking a lot about dominance and hand dominance. And I have sort of, because I haven't been happy on my, um, with any of my spinning on consistency. And one of the things that her and I have been chatting about is this idea of using our dominant hand to do the majority of the work. So um, here, if I draw out with my right hand, I feel, even though it feels really awkward right now, and I have been practicing and it's been getting better and better, I have been feeling like I have more control, even though I feel awkward. Um, and so I'm going to talk about a, a, a wheel project that I've got going right now um, that I've kind of come back to as sort of a playground, if you will, of practicing this switching back to using my right hand more and more and more. And so I have been really trying to switch back to using my right hand more intentionally um, and doing the hard work of a lot of this stuff with my dominant side and with my dominant hand. Um, and I think as I get used to it that I actually like my results a, lot, a little bit better. Um, I just, right now, it feels very awkward. And one of the things that I'm really finding with my support spindling is keeping the length of draft consistent. And of course, that is what gives me a consistent yarn. And I find when I draft out with my left hand, it's very difficult for me to keep that drafting distance consistent. Whereas with my right hand, um, I find like if I want to draw back an inch, it's way easier for me to control that. I'm spinning on my knee, so like my spindle is supported on my knee, so this is actually more challenging than it looks. Um, so I find when I'm spinning out with my right hand that I actually like the results of my yarn a little bit better. Um, I'm going to keep playing with this because the other thing that I've been working on is a wheel project, like I just mentioned. I've kind of gone back to my... This I had thought that maybe I would do this project from my Zero to Hero this year, which is um, a spackle that we've got going on in the Ravelry group. We did it last year over the course of 12 months, and we're doing it again this year. I decided not to do it for my for my Zero to Hero uh, because I wanted to do my Romney Merino fleece. But I've kind of come back to this because it's um, 16 ounces of fiber because it's four braids split up the way that um, Teresa of the Passionate Knit podcast shows. And there was an article in a spinoff magazine written by Debbie Held, I think, um, about this technique of how to combine these braids. And if you look on Instagram under hashtag combo spin cow, you'll find it. Um, so what I've been doing is I've come back to this this week, and I've only worked on it a tiny bit, but basically um, I took two braids of Nest Fiber Studio, one braid of Hello Yarn, and one braid of Created by LCB, and they all had really similar colors, which is why I chose them, and I, I showed it on the podcast before and talked about it a little bit, but I haven't really followed up with it, so um, you'll start hearing about this project a little bit more now that I've sort of gotten back to it, but the way that I traditionally spin is when my bobbin is on the wheel, um, I spin, I'm actually going to pull this out so that I can show you guys on here. So if this is the fiber and I'm holding it, I actually use my right hand to hold my fiber and I draft forward with my left hand, which I think is why drafting with my left hand on my support spindle felt more natural when I switched, because I do generally draft with my left hand. And if I'm working short backward draft, then I tend to... Um, with my left hand, hold, draft back, smooth, draft back, smooth. Um, so my right hand isn't really doing any of the work. And this is where the conversation with Kim, with my friend Kim came up. Um, because the idea of having more control and starting to think more and more and more and more about uh, my own consistencies and my own spinning is that my right hand, which is my dominant hand, which is uh, much more attuned to fine motor. Even though my left hand is very good, my right hand is way better. Um, and so when I was very, very first learning how to spin, I really should have learned to draft with my right hand. Um, and of course, I defaulted to my left and have never looked back and never questioned it, actually. And so over the last week or so, I've been really thinking about that and I've been using this project to sit down and actually 
practice drafting with my right hand. So my singles are no longer super even. Um, there's parts that are a little bit thicker, there's parts that are a little thinner, so I'm not going to worry about it. I think this will probably end up being about a heavy sport weight, light DK, and I'm just going to go with it. I'm just going to, you know, spin it, enjoy it. I may or may not three-ply it. Um, I'm going to spin through the four braids. Whatever comes, comes. I'm going to end up with a wonderful yarn in the end anyways, even if it's not super consistent. And I really want to work on getting my right hand to, to work more um, more to how I want it to work. And hopefully I'll start seeing that consistency in my yarns that I'm craving. And you'll probably think, well, my yarns are very consistent, but when you look really closely at my yarns, they're ever so inconsistent. And it's because my left hand has a really tough time always drafting out that exact same length. And again, it's that fine motor. And I'm just wondering if maybe my, my skill will jump a little bit if I switch to my right hand, even if there's going to be a learning curve. So I will keep you posted on that and let you know how that goes. So I haven't really been getting any stash lately and I haven't really been buying anything, but I did pick up this braid of Sweet at Sweet Georgia when I was teaching last week. This is Fauna. I got eight ounces. It was on the seconds wall. And the reason why I bought it was because I'm going to use this to keep practicing this technique um, and keep practicing with my right hand. So it's a pull wear silk, 85-15%, um, and I'm going to strip it down and I'm going to use my right hand and see if I can keep really honing that skill um, and getting my yarns just that little bit more consistent. So that's the plan. And I will let you know how it goes. And I'll keep chatting about that and fine motor and those developing those skills on the podcast as I learn myself. So what I've been working on this week and the reason why I haven't really been working on anything related to spinning and why I kind of felt like I needed a little bit of a break from spinning is uh, I had bought some Barocco Vintage back at Christmas time and I bought the um, dark purple and the really light tealy green. I have no idea what these color numbers are. Um, I don't have the tags. I already recycled them by accident. But um, I'm sure if you look up on the Barocco website on Vintage, you'll be able to find these colors because they're pretty, pretty, um, well, they're, they're not easily mistaken for other colors. They're pretty, they're pretty strong colors. Um, I used two... Uh, skeins of the purple and this is just one skein of the teal blue and I'm actually think or teal green and I'm thinking that I'm going to knit a toque for Nora out of this um, so that she'll have a matching toque but basically I bought these three uh, skeins for Nora she really wanted a purple and green sweater and um, you'll recognize this book because I've shown it quite a number of times on the podcast I just finished the shoreline best out of it this is by Carrie Bosdick Hogue and um, I knit for her, and I just finished it. So you're seeing it fresh off the needles. I knit for her the little lighthouse pullover, and it's got a bunch of color work in it. And there, I think there's a, a total of four colors that go up through the yoke, but I didn't want to buy multiple colors. I didn't have any colors in my stash that would really work that well. So I decided to stick with just the two colors and ignored that there needed to be different colors in the color work section and just used this teal green. So um, that's what I did. I cast on um, two days ago. So today is day three of knitting and this is it finished. So I knit the 25 and three quarter inch chest and I had to actually cut off the color work. So there's supposed to be a whole other section of color work up here. But unfortunately, um, my row gauge was off quite a bit. Um, my row gauge was significantly bigger. And so because of the depth of the yoke, um, if I had continued to knit, it would have been really big on her. And as it is, I knit one size bigger than what she really needed. She can wear it. It looks adorable. Um, and I added an inch to the sleeves and an inch to the uh, body of the sweater. And so um, overall, it'll be, it'll fit her for a while as she grows height wise. Um, but I don't want to add anything more to the yoke because it was already, when I tried it on her, it was already way up here. So the pattern calls for actually turning 
the ribbing over and for seaming it down. So I started to do that and she asked me to take it out. She said it was too bulky around her neck. So it kind of looks like a mock turtleneck instead and it's so cute. So I'm hoping that by the time I render this and get this all ready that I'll have photos of her actually wearing it and you guys will actually see this on her. And she is wearing for anybody who is thinking about maybe making one for a little person in your life, um, she's wearing a 4T and a 5T right now. So she's in 4 toddler and 5 toddler sizing. Um, most of her clothes come from Children's Place, Old Navy, Joe Fresh, that kind of stuff. I think Joe Fresh is a Canadian only brand, but um, that's the kind of clothes, and those clothes tend to fit a little bit bigger anyways. Um, but she's wearing a 4T and a 5T. So this is probably a 5T. Um, I'm very curious to see what it would look like on James, but so far Nora won't let him try it. So one thing I will say about the sweater that I really, really liked um, is their short rows. So in the back, before you start the yoke, there are short rows down here. So when she put it on, you can see the rise in the back of the neck. And it fits properly because so many kids' sweaters don't include short rows. And it bugs me because um, they need them. Like anatomically, your back is higher than your front and you need room for your shoulders. So like you really need short rows in a sweater like this, particularly a yoked sweater like this, to make it sit along the back of the neck properly. Anyways, it looks adorable. It was totally worth it to take a break off of spinning because to make this because I enjoyed every minute of it. It was exactly what I needed to feel reinvigorated again. And I'm just really pleased to be able to show it with you guys, share it with you guys. I haven't blocked it yet, but the color work is very even so far. And um, I, I'm hoping that you guys will see some photos of it on her uh, wearing it. So really fun and a much needed break this week from spinning. That is everything for this week. It's a little bit of a shorter show. Um, I hope that you have a wonderful weekend and a, it's hump day today. It's Wednesday. So I hope that you're having a good week so far. Um, happy spinning and I will talk to you guys next week. Bye.